professional bowler, picks up the 7-6. Well, I'm impressed with the uh, bowling. I mean, he used to be a bowler, and now he's a professional poker player. If he likes watching TV all night and sleeping till noon, he could be my ideal man. <laughs> and with that 7-6 of diamonds, he's going to raise it to 130000 Melvin Jones for deuce. No thanks. Theo Tran, jack nine of diamonds. I'm sorry, Theo. Are we boring you? Well, how much? 130. Get your head in the game, son. 800 grand to the winner. Theo in the small blind. He'll get a small discount. 105,000 more. He makes the call. And his buddies now perk up. Hope Theo perks up. Yeah, they look more into it than he is. Chris Ferguson now on the uptick at this final table. Ace 10, another playable ace. Chris Ferguson now has 45 World Series caches since 1998, the most in that span, one more than Phil Helmuth. Chris is just beyond human. From the big blind, he calls for 80,000 more. So three players will see the flop. Right now, Ferguson with the advantage with that ace 10. Now the flop. It is king 9-5. Tran pairs his nine to take the lead. David Bach picked up a gut shot straight draw and his mirror image, Chris Ferguson, missed the flop. Tran first to act. And he'll check his nines. No reason for Ferguson to bet. Chris doesn't even check like other humans. <laughs> Everyone checks to the turn. Turn card, tray of hearts, double belly buster now for Bach, but Tran still leads. Well, Theo looks either weak or disinterested. Yeah, he does check it over to Ferguson. Ferguson did not improve, so he'll check it. And Bach, who says he can tell how intelligent someone is by looking into their eyes, I'm all in. moves all in. Well, I can't see David Bach's eyes, but how about how he's played his hand? Short stacked, he raised pre-flop with 7-6. Now he goes all in on the turn on a draw. He is reading weakness behind those sunglasses from Tran and Ferguson. All right, I'm all in. And Tran is going to come over the top and move all in with the best hand. But boy, that was a tough decision for Theo for almost all of his chips. Jesus folds. I hope I, don't, I, didn't, I, hope I made a good read. Good call. I got to catch a card. A good read by Tran as Bach will need to catch his straight to win the hand. And the nod medic sees his buddy Theo Tran with a lot of chips at risk. I'm Jack Nine. Theo turns over the jack nine of diamonds. David oh, turns over the six seven of diamonds. No, it's a has, I knew he had turned a draw. I knew he turned a draw. He overbet all in. He overbet all in. I knew he turned a draw. Theo Tran with shades of Kenny Tran. A great read for almost all his chips. One card to come. Bach at risk. Look, thank you. Bach now looking to make his straight. He needs an eight or a four, or he is wamboozled. And now the river card is a deuce, and that will finish it for David Bach. Great read and a big hand for Theo Tran. And that read is good enough to make it our planter's good instinct moment. Bach will go out in eighth place and win almost $118,000. And a good turnaround for Theo Tran after a couple of tough hands. He knocks out an opponent and pads his chip stack in the process. The Planters Good Instinct Moment is brought to you by Planters. Instinctively good. Back inside the Rio where poker is alive and well. This event began with almost 4,000 players, Norman. Amazing. Lon, this year's Boston Marathon had 25,000 entrants, but they didn't have to pay $1,500 each. <laughs> All right, action on Theo Tran. 10-8 of spades. Theo says he was the black sheep of the family. His brother's an engineer, one of his sister's a lawyer, and Theo was sitting there betting hopscotch on lunch break. <laughs> he raises it to 150,000 chips. Action folds around to Mike No in the big blind. No looks down at King Seven offsuit. Costs him a hundred thousand more, and he'll make the call. Well, that's a call he didn't have to make, Lon. Uh, he'll be out of position with a junkyard hand. All right, so ten eight versus King Seven. The flop is seven Queen Trey. No pairs his seven to take the lead. But you know, Lon, this is the World Series of Poker. We need to see better flops. That one doesn't cut it with me either. And no, checks his middle pair. Tran now with nothing. 
He wants to put chips to work, and 200,000 is the bluff. That's a continuation bet, but he could be continuing down a dark and stormy path. No, quickly makes that call. So Theo Tran in trouble going to the turn, and there is an ace, and that misses both, but maybe a scare card. No checks again. Well, Theo Tran's got position. Let's see if he wants to use position again or just give up on this hand. Oh, he's reaching for it. More chips. And Theo is going to figure 375,000 will buy it. Theo with no pair and no draw. That's about half the pot. Mike's opened the door for Theo to steal the pot, but let's see if he can sniff out the bluff. He's bluffing, Mike. He's bluffing. Can he hear me? <laughs> And Mike No does release his hand. So Theo Tran steals this pot with a solid bluff. Mike No's chip stack will take a hit, but it's going to take more than that to rattle this man who has bounced back from much greater adversities in the past. I'm from New Orleans, but I'm now residing in Los Angeles. I lost everything in Katrina. It was devastating. I couldn't believe it. I saw the flood stains of my ceiling and I was like in awe. I was like, I can't believe water ever got that high. Everything I accumulated was just wiped out. It was one of the lowest points of my life. It took me a month to figure out what I was going to do, but uh, I kind of knew. I lost everything and there's no reason for me to stay in New Orleans anymore. It opened me up to it, see what LA was all about. I saw how much money they had in Los Angeles, so I decided to move there and take my shot. It looks, it looks like I'm being stealing. I just fell in love with the lifestyle. I'll get the hang of this. I just played my game. I'm used to like being patient. I'm a cash game specialist, so I really don't play a lot of tournaments, but the overlay is so huge that I had to take my shot. I never thought I'd be a professional gambler. Come on. But somehow, as events unfolded, this is where I ended up. Uh, I'll take this any day of the week. Yeah, I'll take this. I'll take that any day of the week. I miss my family and friends there, but I go visit from time to time. New Orleans will always be my home, but L.A. is my home now. In L.A., they call Mike Fat Cat because he waits around for all the fishes and gets fat off of them. He's looking at a very fat payday here. $1,500 buy-in for a chance to win $831,000. Blinds are up to thirty dollars and 60000 Grant Hinkles from Kansas. He markets software to Fortune 1000 companies. Doesn't he have a flight to catch? <laughs> he did joke that he's going to have to win this thing to break even for all the airline charges. Mike No looks at pocket fours. 180. And he will raise it up to three times, the big blind. Mike told us he wasn't worried about Chris Ferguson at this final table, but he was worried about Theo Tran. And there is Theo Tran. Tran looks down at pocket aces. And No will have good reason to be worried about Tran now. And Theo just with the call. Yeah, he will try to trap Mike No here. Ferguson back to his patient ways, folds. And so Tran and No will go heads up again. And the flop is 6-10 Trey. That does not help Mike. Yeah, there's another flop that I do not believe is World Series caliber. <laughs> Dealers are just getting started, maybe. No checks his small pocket pair. And Tran fires out with 180,000. You should note all the small movements players make relative to Chris Ferguson, who, of course, never moves. No makes the call. He'll come along with the pocket fours, and he will be way behind Theo Tran.